to the ref room. Hockey talk for referees, coaches, players, and fans. Broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. With your hosts, Scott Smokensills and Brad Bobrock. Live. The ref room starts right now. Oh, yeah, it is Monday, and it really is Monday. I am here with my man, Brad Bomrock. I am Scott Smoking Sills. And, you know, what do we get? Computer updates, like, on a Monday yep. afternoon, like, 10 minutes before the show starts. I just got, like, a major update. Then everything else wants to update because of that. So it's like we are, we are here in... Uh, having technical nightmares but we are here live as promised at 5 30 right on time and uh we've got lots to talk about today we've got a guest that's going to join us in a little while the phone is blowing up over here and uh you know it's typical every time we get on stuff gets crazy around here so uh great to see you as always how you doing i'm uh, doing well i got bad news for you though scott what's your bad news nothing is being presented live Nothing is being presented live. You know what? That's what I thought because I didn't see anything coming off of, off of uh, Facebook. So uh, Restream just wanted an update from us at the same time. So I think everything is haywire. So I don't think we're, uh, we're live on Facebook and YouTube right now. It's going to be a recorded session that you'll get. So we'll go right. with the recorded session. Uh, otherwise, I got to go in here and... Well, we'll try it. I'll tell you what. You talk for a second. Let me see if I can make some magic happen here with the restream and get us out. But actually, like, we've got a major update, and that's going to be eliminating restream pretty soon for us. So uh, we're going to be going probably just through Ecamm for everything. So we'll see how that plays out. But in the meantime, uh, we are going to talk about a few things today. First of all, our guest is going to be Max. He's coming on later, and we are going to talk about, like, all the camps hopefully. for the summer. Hopefully. Hopefully, if everything works out according to plan. Yeah, um, his, his experiences of the camps. Exactly. And what exactly. his thoughts were and what the benefits were. Yeah. But the other thing we wanted to kind of talk about today was uh, getting ready for the seminars, like expectations. Expectations for mm -hmm. newer officials, returning officials, experienced officials, what to expect, what what you should be prepared for. I mean, because I, I think that there's kind of a misconception for a lot of the, you know, newer officials that are coming in that it's like, well, you know, if, if I can make it, I'll make it. And, you know, uh, this works for me and this doesn't work for me. But, you know, folks, this is a job. It's a job for you. So, while you don't go to a job interview per se, you know, you're not getting hired to flip the burgers or make the fries. Or do whatever you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but this is a well-paying job for the younger people. Really well-paying job. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know that they always take it as seriously as they should, the responsibility level. Because as Brad and I have talked about before many times on the show, how much responsibility you're actually given in a hockey game and what the costs are and what everybody has put into putting that game on that you are going to officiate. There's a tremendous yeah, amount no. of time, effort, skill, and money that has been put in to having that game. And I think a lot of the officials, you know, by, by if, if you're not showing up 30 minutes prior to your, your scheduled assignment, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to the teams that you are about to officiate. Hey, yeah, no. Scott, hey, yeah, and I'll make one point on that, though, just, okay. just as you keep plowing through everything here. Everybody understands if you're coming from one assignment to another. You know, if you're getting there, you know, let your partners know. We all understand that. But the other big thing is, like Scott said, you know, a half hour, everybody, you know, that's the understandable. At least be pulling into the parking lot at that half hour if you can. You know, everybody understands that things happen. Uh, and that's just that's just game day. I think Scott, I think where you're going first with this is you know the the cost and you know the cost and the time that the parents put in, that the organizations put in, that the players put in just before they even set foot on the ice. So you know if you look at the astronomical amount of time that they spend for an activity to take place, which is one hockey game, 
which, you know, we're showing up and we're compensated for our time. We also get to choose when we're going. It's not like, you know, Joe in the back room says, hey, uh, you're referee in this game on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. No, in most areas, you know, you know, I know a lot of areas you can pick it yourself. And then other areas, yeah, they still do it the old assigning way where they call you on the phone and they go, look, I got this, this, and this. You want it? You can still choose from it. So it's a big difference. So everybody understands the the woes of registration. And I think that's where we really want to go with it. And, you know, like every seminar is different. Every location is different. Every area is different. And we're not just speaking specifically our area. Uh, USA Hockey has certain minimums. And they're asking you basically pretty much for one day, okay? And they're not even asking for a large chunk of time. Like, we understand that, like, the level one is all long. It's a long, long process. We get that. Guess what? Everybody that's teaching it, everybody that's officiating, the higher level games that everybody, a lot of people want to get to, they've all gone through it. We've all started So, you know, even people that, Right. So, you know, you got to put in a little bit of effort up front. We understand that. We get the cost as well, too. But, you know, Scott, you made an excellent point. Yeah, for the younger officials, it's a great job. Like, you don't have to have that pressure of being interviewed. You don't have to be at a set schedule. Because I worked at a place many years ago, and it was an oil change place. And I had to be there three days a week, and it was from – I think five o'clock to nine o'clock or whatever it was. Yeah. And it was, it was over minimum wage, but it wasn't much. Yeah. You know, maybe and, you got you know, a dollar or two I more didn't get than to minimum pick the wage. Time. You know, you're getting, yeah, you're getting probably more than double, almost triple minimum wage, just starting at a mic game nowadays. I'm pretty sure I looked to, I saw that there is a raise, pretty significant raise coming for, even for the, the people that are working mic games. Uh, it's good money. You're a you're a twelve or fourteen year old youngster getting the opportunity to ref hockey. My gosh, you're getting to skate. You're getting to mm-hmm. learn how to you know manage a game. You're you're getting so many life value lessons. You're learning management. You're learning time management. You're learning how to work with people. How to deal with situations. Um, you know, I can go on and on and on. There's just so much life lesson involved in refereeing a hockey game. And on top of that, you're being paid handsomely. You're being paid very well. Yep. So, you know, I think that if you're coming into doing this, I think you really, really need to think about it. You know, I I think my experience, now I'm not talking anybody out of doing this, but I think having a little bit of personality helps. Being early, oh, like, yeah. you know, like getting there on time, being able to talk to people, you know, can you skate the game? You know, I mean, you know, might game may not be, you know, like the toughest workout for you, but, you know, you're probably going to work a peewee game pretty soon if you know what you're doing. Can you skate that game? Could you skate a Bantam game? Could you skate a midget game? Can you skate and navigate around 18-year-old people that can play this game really well and they're fast and they're big and they're strong? Can you, can you move around? Can you get out of the mm-hmm. way? Can you work with those people? You know, granted, you may not be working with them in year one. Maybe you will. If you're good and you're a good skater and, and you know, you're, you're competent, you're going to get some opportunities and you're going to get them a lot sooner than you used to because there is a shortage of officials. So people that might not or, normally see a Bantam game for a year or two might be seeing it in their first season. It's very possible if they feel no, that you're competent enough to do it. That's not so. the only time. Yeah. The only yeah. the other time too. Let's say I, you know, me and you were there, Scott, for a four official game. Our third partner's there. Our fourth one calls up. I was just in a car accident. There's yeah. no way the car's not drivable. I'm not going to be there. Yep. Hey, thanks for the heads up. Well, there's a 20 year old guy over here refereeing. All right, can he, you know, we'd sit there and, you know, in some areas, if you are allowed to, you know, they'll encourage you to try and fill that assignment if you can with a referee that's there, which is most places they want it, you know, to get, you know, at least the game over, get the game done because they don't want to reschedule because of something like that. It's nobody's fault. But, you know, sometimes on the fly, you'll grab somebody off the ice and they'll be like, I've only been refing for like 
six weeks, and I've refereed yep. ten games. Well, yep. we're gonna we're gonna break gonna in here. <laughs> Buckle yeah, up your yeah, it's gonna. <laughs> It's going to be interesting, and I'll never forget. I, I did that with somebody in a, a midget major game. It was a four official system, and he could skate. This this guy could skate like the wind. He was like 22 years old. It, I think he'd ref like 20 games, he said. And, you know, I'm like, all right, so do you need me to, like, tell you where you got to go or anything for this? Like, we ran through lining and all that, and I go, you know, right before I went to go drop the puck at center ice and the foreman, I go, are you sure? You're okay right now. And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. We put that puck down. It went back to the defenseman furthest away from him. The guy ripped it down the ice, dude. Almost hit this guy. His eyes were so big. He looked like a deer. <laughs> oh, when you yeah. drive past a deer at night and it looks at you, that's what he looked like. And then, oh. like, it went down the ice, and his partner hit the whistle as the far guy because he didn't even, like, acknowledge it, you know, that it was icing. And then, you know, yeah. as we're skating back down the ice, he picks up the puck, and I, I skated right next to him. I'm like, okay. Now that you've got that out of your system, you, know, you think you can get through this? And he's like, I I don't know what happened. It just happened so fast. I go, I go well, well, the rest of the game is going to be like this. So I hope you're ready for it. And he was like, okay. Took him about a period and a half. He calmed down. You know, he got through it. And I think he refereed for like two or three more years. And then uh, he got a, a job, I think, with the – or joined the Army or something like that and left us, unfortunately. Yeah. So he went career with that. I think it was Army. Army, Navy, something like that. I remember and, last uh, year. You know, unfortunately, he's gone. I had a guy that's, uh, and he's probably in his, his 40s. His son plays on a, one of the high school teams, and he started roughing. And he turns out he played junior hockey. Like, the guy can skate. He's a really good skater. And, um, you know, he was probably 10 games in, and he had, uh, I think he had a Bantam Central States game with me, two-man. And then he was lining his first high school game, which was going to be a three-man, and it was a high-level game. And, you know, we gave him basically an ADP course in, you know, 20 minutes. You know, here's what to expect. Here, here's what you got to do because he hadn't done it before. He did fantastic. He was great. You know, so, you know, guys are going to get some great opportunities. So going back to the point that we really wanted to make is <laughs> yeah, for, all go ahead. Young, Sorry. We... for all you new officials that are coming in, here's what you're going to have to do. Why don't you break down what's involved with the time commitment of getting through, you know, to get your level one certification or your level two certification, meaning you're going to have some, you know, like an in-person or a, a Zoom meeting that you're going to have to attend. There's certain things that yep. your criteria you're going to have to meet. So I'm going to let Brad break that down because he's the referee in chief and he's the ultimate decision maker as to like, you know, do you deserve an exemption or not here? <laughs> because it's a job, folks. You're expected to do certain things. Yeah, so you're not getting an exemption from us, I can tell you that. You're going to have to take your seminar and uh, go with it. Uh, USA Hockey has their own minimums, and some areas make it longer. And Illinois is one of those places that ours are a little bit longer than uh, USA Hockey's minimums. But we've done that, and we enjoy it. And the referees that teach it don't mind the extra time that's added in order to add some of their own stuff into seminars and go over things a little bit better because sometimes when you do the minimum, you know, that's what the outcome is. And is your phone going crazy over there? Of what? course, of course. Just the way it works, <laughs> son. Yeah, anytime we're on the air, it's always crazy. So, Well, so, you know, so like I said, some places make it longer. Some places, you know, just do the minimum, uh, you know, and it's fine with whatever the local needs or whatever they feel works out the best for them. Uh, we do have some of our own stuff that we cover because it's specific to Illinois. So, and because of being in the Chicagoland area, a lot of it is done uh, in the local area. So you have to explain some of that. And then also like our level ones, I don't know if it's like this everywhere or if it's something that we do, uh, you know, we require any officials that's uh, under the age of 16 that their parents come in and do a short little tutorial to officiating as well. Now, you know, that sounds like, oh, horrible for parents. It's actually more to just get you informed on what they need to do next, what is expected of them, what are the resources we have that they can definitely take advantage of. So, yeah, it might be 15 minutes that the parents have to get on, and they're like, well, the kid's taking it. I don't understand that. Yeah, it's 15 minutes, but I can tell you this, 
if you take that 15 minutes, you will definitely benefit from it. My mother made sure and she came. And the second I got out, I was off to the races. Yeah. I mean, think about it. As far as the parents are concerned, chances are if you are under 16 or 17 years of age and you want to be an official, you're probably going to need some help getting around from game to game. And that means your parents are probably going to have to be involved in making sure that that happens one way or another. Because I don't think uh, I don't think all the officials are Ubering from game to game with uh, tight schedules and things of that nature. So uh, I, I no. think, you know, you know, parents, it, it it behooves you to, you know, be involved in this and, and work. If this is something you want to see your your child do, your teenager, uh, you know, you, you're going to have to put a little time in. And same thing for. You know, the people that are coming in to officiate, you know, as I was mentioning, you, you should be there a half hour before your game time. You need to have proper equipment. You know, we've talked about this just a couple of shows ago, talking about what you need. And, and we're talking about having elbow pads. We're talking about having shin pads. We're talking about having athletic supporter protection, your helmet, you know, the uniform, everything that you need. Just like you're going to a hockey game. You know, you wouldn't show up to your, your game or your practice you know, with no equipment, just your skates, it's not going to not gonna work. I don't think your coach is going to put you on the ice. It's no different. You know, you, you have a responsibility at that point if you're going to be an official. And, you know, when we look at what it costs, Brad, what did you perceive the cost to be for putting on a hockey game? We talked about this. Cost of ice. Yeah, so. At, so what, they figure. 600 bucks an hour. Maybe you got an well, hour no, and a half slot. We were. We were generous. We did we did forty four hundred dollars an hour. Okay. So let's say let's say you have a, a, a hour and a half slot. So right there you're at six hundred dollars. Yep. So then you look at each team's gonna practice at least twice during that week. So split those in half. So now you're at four hundred each team. So now you're at fourteen hundred dollars. Now mm-hmm. all the time that the parents have to spend and all that, you know, I think we've tagged that to like I think we gave it like a hundred bucks, right, per team or something like that. We did this a while ago, so I don't remember yeah. exactly. I mean, so, but we're at like the time for sixteen hundred dollars and 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 the player to be driving to the game. Yep, all the we registration, got, we got all the equipment going in the car, right? Yep. Maybe maybe driving an hour or more to get to that game because if you know if you're playing, let's say this is a Central States game or a AAA game, you know. Teams could be coming from out of state here, they very easily. Yeah, or they could be driving a couple a hours. Flight, flight, a flight. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We a got lot teams that come in it. from Canada, folks. You could be working a game where we have teams from Canada, or California, or Florida, New York. They come in from all over the place. Oh man, it's never stops. Um, that was one of your board members. <laughs> there's a mute. There's a mute button. I hope you yeah, know I, that. Yeah, I just hit it. By the way. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so, so yeah, there, there's a lot of costs that are involved in putting this game on and the responsibility, you know, this, yeah. this has to happen at a designated time. So, you know, please, if you're going to do this, be prepared, take it seriously, realize what you are getting yourself into. You're going to have yeah, a great we... time. Do it. If you like it, you're going to have a great time. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm having a blast. I'm sorry. I'm getting too old. <laughs> I'd like to be doing this for another 20 or 30 years. Well, you know, I get it, especially the first year. There's a lot, um, you know, USA made a, a great idea, a great improvement, however you want to put it, uh, where they incorporated all the online modules the level ones used to have to do yeah. in their first level one season. So you're done. You walk into your seminar. Those modules are completed. All you got to do is take your test after that. Yep. And, 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 and now if you have to do save sport. Yeah. And Everybody, if you're check. over 18, 18 or over, you have to do safe sport, which or I don't or you're know. You're going to turn 18 that season during the season. OK, so safe sport. Now, if it's a refresher course for all of our returning officials, it's roughly half hour. Is that about right? That's what that's what we've been hearing. But yeah. the problem is, is I don't know because like. I was talking with somebody, and I, I did, like, part three or something like that, but there was somebody that did another part that it was 
a little longer but if you have to do part one I, I don't know exactly how long it is and it's not unfortunately it's not published anywhere yeah but well, we, we have understand a guest, the time. As I, I mentioned that that is going to join us today and he has arrived so I, I want to bring uh, Max in here so let's do this give me a second to put him in play here and this ought to be good yeah uh, let's see what's up Max how are you buddy there he is and he's got no audio see? right yep Where's your audio, Max? You got You're wireless earbuds guy. in, buddy. That's your problem. Yeah. Yeah, take those out and turn that off. Yeah, take take your earbuds out and try it. Take it out and just go right to the microphone. Talk to me now. I think I heard noise now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. There you go. Yes. Okay. Everybody shows up with wireless earbuds. They've been watching too much TV. They think that's the way to go, but they never work. You got to have wired earbuds. So. Well, what's funny about it is the guys on TV, I guarantee you, are actually wearing a microphone. Don't know why they have those earbuds in. Yeah. I'm just blown away at how... They're just selling merchandise? Yeah. Well, you know, in, in this day and age, everybody should have a microphone in their house and they should have a, uh, you know, set of earbuds to, to be able to do Zoom because it's so common. So anyway, Max is uh, one of our up and coming. I'm going to say up and coming. You know, he's an experienced official now. He's been around for a few years working a lot of the higher level games. And he's had an opportunity uh, through IHOA and through USA Hockey to go to some of the development camps. And so uh, a couple weeks ago, he hit us up, and he had been watching the show with a bunch of his buddies, and, and they were at one of the high-level uh, training camps, and, and they were like, hey, yeah, we're checking you guys out. So, you know, people watch us from all over the country, and, uh, you know, we want to talk to Max about, like, the experience of being at one of these camps and what the day-to-day -day routine is and, uh, you know, like how they progress. I mean, when Max started out, you know, he was working – lower level games and and he's just moved up the ranks and moved up the ranks and you know now he's working all the great games so uh you know kudos to him because he played high level hockey and he can skate really well and you know he's learning the system and this is what it's like for so many of the new officials that are just going to be starting now uh you know if you're in that 17 how old were you when you started max uh well first of all can you guys hear me because yeah i can yeah. hear you guys pretty well Okay, good. Okay. Well, we can hear I, you. When I, when I first started, yep. I don't think so, yep. guys. When I first started, I was, I was 15, 15 years old. Oh, he's frozen up, but he was 15 when he started. There he goes. Now it looks like he's back again. So 15. Yeah. And uh, how many games did you work your first season, roughly? Uh, my first season, I probably worked around 150, 200 games. Wow. And that was all mites, squirts, peewees. So you jumped right into the fire. So you could tell right there he, he's serious because we have a lot of the officials See? that come in that are ones and twos that might work, you know, five games, ten games during the course of the year because they're playing. But you played and ended up working like 150, 200 games. Am I right? Right. So I just I just started refing because one of my buddies, my old coaches and my, my buddies were refing, and they were like, hey, you should come and try it out. And I was like, come on now, refing's stupid. Why, why would I ever try refing? And then they're like, oh, you can make you can make some good money. And at that point, I never had a job. I was like, all right, I'm 15. Like, I need to make some money. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to make some money, whatever. And so picked up refing, did a couple of games because I was like, you know what? $30 for a mic game, $30 for an hour of work. Sounds pretty cool. Pays and more than that now, my friend. It's more than that now. <laughs> that, yeah, was, that was what, five years ago? Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. hey let's, let's, put every, let's put this out there in perspective, okay? 24 years ago, when I started, Mites paid $11. <laughs> yeah, when I started, they okay. were paying, 10 so, years ago, they were paying like 17 to 19 maybe $21 was a good Mite game. That's that's about what you got. So now, like high, high school was like year, $30 an hour? Last year, they were paying, I think, $32 an hour for Mite games. Wow. If I, it, well, not an hour. It's $32 a game. Game might be I, over in less than an hour. It was 30. thought it was... I thought it was 37. No, no, 32. I don't know. I, yeah. I think it was 37. You're referee in chief. What do you expect it to know? <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was 32. I, 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 I know they're getting an increase this year. I saw that they're getting an increase. I don't know what the increase is, but, but you know, it's $32 a game. Uh, 
with an increase this year, it'll be more. So, you know, you think about that, you're, you're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, making $32 an hour. Um, that's great money. I mean, what was your, what was your uh, other options, Max, that were available to you if you wanted to make some money, huh? Exactly. There, yeah. there, was, there wasn't anything. So I, kept, I stuck with it and I ended up really liking it. And I met some really cool guys along the way. And they kind of were like, hey, like you could skate, you're good at this, you could move on. So I was like, you know what? Why not? So I tried. I tried to move on. I was skating my butt off in my games, and I was doing my best. And I picked up some guys' uh, notices. They kind of signed me up, and that's when I started. That's when I started taking it a little more seriously. Yeah. Um, let's let's go back. Do you remember the first game you ever worked? Uh, I do. Ooh, actually, a, one, one I of do. our good good good. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember my first game. What's that? I honestly don't. But uh, I do know that, like, you know, when, when you got there and, and you were working with somebody that was more experienced and they, they helped you get through, like, all the pregame, I'm like, oh, my gosh, how are you going to get all this stuff done? Like, before the game starts, there's a lot of responsibility. But, you know, it's second nature after you've done it a few times and it's pretty easy. But uh, do you remember how that went for you? And who did you work with your first game? Do you remember your partner? Uh, so, <laughs> well, I was really nervous my first game, and I, I generally had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I got a mentor. I, I, I went through that. I went with Carl, and I went to a mentor. And my, my mentor was actually Mr. Ted Barnhart, and he, like, he likes to take credit for being my mentor. And he's, he was a great first, first game mentor, and I enjoyed him. Uh, my, I can't remember my first, first partner. It was a kid younger than me, actually. And... Ted kind of walked us both through the game, and he was awesome. And I ended up working games with him after. And I remember putting my arm up for penalties that weren't penalties. And I remember putting my arm up for icing, calling offside that wasn't offside. So I, my, my first game was probably the most embarrassing game I've ever worked. But there's there's some good people behind me, and Ted was <laughs> supporting me, and he's telling me to skate hard. So he, he helped me out through the game. And by the time the game was over, I felt a whole lot more confident, even period by period. Well, let's do this. Let's, Max mentioned he had a mentor, and Teddy Barnhart, one of our guys that watches the show regularly, a uh, really nice guy. And, uh, Brad, why don't you explain the mentoring program, how we get started with the newer officials and what we do to help them to, to develop and, and get through those first games that may be a little bit tougher. Yeah, as long as I'm still coming through, you can at least hear me. Yeah, because on my yeah. side the the video looks horrible. Yeah, it so does I look a little tell. funky, but yeah, okay. I can see you. Well, so the meds. Are... That's all right. It's something going on with this. So, uh, but anyway, so the mentoring program we uh, take directly from USA Hockey, and it's it's almost like a shadowing program. And what happens is is the official in our area at least um, puts in for what games they have available. Uh, now, typically, it's their parents doing it which, you know, everybody understands. Uh, and they assign a mentor, hopefully, to one of their first games. And the mentor gets there early. They uh, talk to them beforehand, tell them what a score sheet's about, answer any extra questions that they have. And then they're also assigned with a normal partner at the same time. And the normal partner might be a little bit on the newer side as well. So they may mentor them as well throughout it. They go out, they teach them how to do a score sheet. Yeah, we go through it, but it's super fast in a seven, eight hour day. And there's a lot of things to remember. And I think the last thing anybody's learning in there is a score sheet, to be honest with you. Yeah. So they come out and then they get on the ice in a track suit. They don't actually referee the game. Uh, they'll tell you where to kind of stand and they'll help you get through it. I mean, it, it's really, it's something. It's definitely uh, an on-the-job experience. That's how, how this whole job is. There's really not. Brad's kind of freezing up here a little bit, having a little trouble with his audio. There's nothing yeah. that I could say or tell any. I'm going to have Brad dial back in one more time. So I'm going to drop out Brad. Come on back. I'm going to, I'll talk to Max in the meantime while, uh, while Brad's coming back here, something's going on with his audio, but you know, just to continue, you, you, you had a mentor for what your first two games. Usually they try to give you two games with a mentor. Uh, just one game. I just, just one. For my first game. Yeah. One and done. I never got a mentor, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I never, never had one. So, uh, I had to kind of go it alone when I was out there with just whoever I was working with as an official at the time. So 
Uh, I think the mentor program's amazing because uh, it really does get people off to a a better, quicker start and uh, gives them a little opportunity to take a little pressure off them, you know, because the mentor will help you with stuff that's being missed or whatever. And you you learn from that. I can't thank Mr. Barnhart enough. It was it was definitely yeah. <laughs> an awesome experience. So now that you uh, and most of, oh go ahead, Brett. Most yeah, most of the mentors. I want to let everybody know this. Most of the mentors are not uh, what you would say is the guys that are working the American Hockey League or the East Coast Hockey League. Yeah, those guys are sprinkled in there. But more of our mentors are are the individuals that really have a passion for officiating. They want to give their time back in some sort of fashion to other officials, or they may have had a bad experience starting. We have a lot of mentors that are older get involved to help out because their first game was a nightmare for them. So they don't want anybody else to go through it. So I just wanted to put that out there that it's average officials that are helping out with these programs and they help extraordinarily and nobody can thank them enough. So, Max, getting back to, uh, you know, your, your progression here, uh, you worked 150, 200 games your very first year. Obviously, you were really committed because we don't get that out of all the officials that start out. Um, do you remember any challenges that you had back then or anything that kind of changed your career path to to want to go to a higher level and, and, and advance in this and stay with it? Was there anything that, that happened or you worked a game that you were just, like, so blown away with that it – just took you to a whole nother level you know so actually my first year i mean we were obviously we had a lot more refs three or four years ago than we do now that are that are officiating games but i had uh it was me it was me and a partner here and we had a a peewee triple a game and it was probably my 50th or 60th game and obviously you get on the ice the triple a game is definitely unlike an i hill game or a central states game even though that matters so uh, I was definitely a, an experience, and I did pretty well. I had a good partner. He kind of had my back. He worked. He worked higher levels of hockey that, uh, than me then, and he he kind of knew what he was doing. But then there was that game where it was like it was it was fast. It was back and forth, and that was when I realized I was like, you know what? I want to do higher level games, and this is fun. Like, I can't I can't wait. I can't keep beating the uh, little mites and squirts to the blue line to call off sides. Like, I want to meet the players at the blue line. It's more like. It's more like getting into the game and having fun versus being in the game versus just like, you know, just counting down the 15 minutes or 12 minutes periods or whatever and getting the hell out. Yeah. So from a progression standpoint, after you worked that, how long did it take before you were invited to one of the camps or did you get in the ADP program? I'm guessing was like the next step for you to the ADP and then out of the ADP somewhere else. Tell us about the progression of that. Well, so my first year I did the obviously 100, 150 games. I enjoyed it. I had fun. Towards the end of it, I was talking in the ADP. I was in the ADP stage. I wasn't exactly in the program, but at the same time, I wasn't like completely not in the program. I, I attend a couple seminars or one of those meetings. I think we had them at the the Hyatt out in Barrington, and I had out I had out yep. there a couple times. But uh, after that, actually, my second year, that's when COVID hit. That's when that's 29 year 2020. Oh, wow. And so once COVID hit, I was like, we, I mean, we, we went out there in black jacket. So there was really no ADP program at that point. Yeah. yeah. So took it, uh, had to take a year off from the AD, ADP program. <laughs> so, yeah. So the so next step was where, like, you, you, did you get invited to a camp or did you have to apply or ask to go to a camp? What happened as far as that uh, so goes? Actually, so after my second season, obviously, it was more of a, it was a, it was a botch season. There wasn't many games going on until towards the end. But uh, I actually went to Central District Camp out in Ames, Iowa. And uh, that was a great experience. That's where I met Billy Hancock and Steve Renault. And that was my first ever working the three, three and four official systems. Yeah. And it, it was a great, it was a great spot to learn and a great spot to take everything in and just write my notes down as fast as possible. I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean, I've never been there with two guys that have worked the Olympics before, let alone work junior hockey. Cause all I've been doing is might squirts peewees. So yeah. it was really cool at that point. It kind of looked up to the guys and I mean, you still did do, you, but did you recognize those guys from working any of your games growing up playing? Did, I did. Did, you know? I did. 
there, there's a lot of guys that uh, I started reffing with, especially in the first two years that I was like, oh, you're, I know you, you, you you're reffing our game. So yeah, and yeah you don't like recognize them. You go to the seminar or something with them and, and they don't have a helmet on and you're like, I don't know who this person is. The minute they get on the ice, they got the helmet on. Oh yeah, I know that person. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, it's kind of fun. You guys, you guys did our game at LFC one time. At yeah. Forest College and we, we always have yeah. a ball. And I mean, remember there was one time I got, I got dressed in the ref locker room because I refed and then I played and then I refed again. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So what, what yeah, is a day like at one of those camps? What do you, what do you guys do? I mean, you, you get invited to this camp. You're there with how many people, like, from your region or from other regions? And what is your typical day? So if I can recall, at the Central District camp, it was only three days. Uh, it was, like, a Sunday, Monday to Tuesday. Uh, we got there. We drove out there Sunday. Uh, we got on the ice. We had a nice power skate. Uh, classroom, dinner, all that good stuff. And then Monday, Monday we had a nice nice early wake-up call. And we went out there. We kind of, we had a nice little stretch. There wasn't too much running there. We had a quick jog. Um, that was more of a light, light-hearted light camp than what I, than I went to this year. But uh, we had games then. So every, every there was about, uh, I'd want to say, 12 to 14 participants at that camp. And we all worked the game and... Uh, Billy and Steve Renault were uh, filming the games, and they were talking into the mic, so it was almost like they were in our heads, and we, we'd watch the games after. And then at the end of the night, we'd go back, we'd watch film, we'd discuss who was doing who was doing right, what, what was doing right and what was going wrong, and uh, we tried to fix it up at the end of the day by the next day. And obviously, like I said, it was my first three- and four-man official, so I was, I was a little lost out there, but I mean, I'm sure that's how everyone feels when you first start that system. And then Absolutely. we did that. There was the, we did two games. I we ref we actually split half. So uh, some of them would be three man, some of them would be four man. And if you'd ref, especially like a four man, you ref in the first half. You're lining in the second half. So you kind of get both both perspectives there. You you take your jerseys to the bench. You change an intermission at the end of the half. It's, it's a cool experience. Yeah, that sounds great, man. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I, I, that, that camp was a lot of fun. That, that's when I really like, really was like, you know what? I want to, I want to do something with this. That was, the, I, had, I had a blast at that camp. That was. Well, I remember, was, you know, I remember working games with you, you know, before you went to that camp, and then I saw when you came back, and it's like I could see a lot of the improvements that were made. You know, <laughs> no, really, a lot of positive changes and stuff. It, like, really, I saw you go from here to to here, you know, and now just you just came from another camp, right? Didn't you just go to a, a more of an even major camp than that? Well, so I went to two camps this summer. So uh, a big camp. this year it was yeah. This this year was my year where I I took a really big step and I started working some really level high levels of hockey, and uh, I I kind of always pushing for the highest level game I could get. I always loved I always loved it. I mean I was picking up there's an infinite amount of games you could pick up. So I was picking up four or five six games a day almost. And then you're you're like going through the ranger and you're just like oh can I get from Mount Prospect to Glenview to back to Mount Prospect in 20 minutes or whatever. It was like, it was one of those. And uh, I actually got invited. I applied. I got invited to Futures Camp at the beginning of the summer in June. And that was in Colorado Springs. And that was actually, that was a really good camp too. I, th- we went there. Uh, it was a little, it was, I was a little, little intimidated at my first. I mean, you're like, there was 15 guys there and you didn't know. I mean, you always have that feeling going through your head, like, like, is this for really for me? Is this is this the right way to go? And I went there, I skated my butt off, and that was that was a tough camp because uh, you got there, and that was that was six days long, and it was nonstop skating, running. That was that was that was a pretty intense camp. I mean, so only fifteen up, guys from around the country were there. So fifteen guys, and there was guys all the way from. Alaska. There was California, Florida, North it's, Dakota. It, it's it's split into four camps throughout the year. Okay. Like yeah. they're all around in that during the summer, but it's it's split into four separate camps now. When I went, it was a different name and it was regional camp and there was a western regional, an eastern regional and it was 25 per per side. They've just split it into four four spots now to make it a I think a more intimate exposure uh, experience. And then B to give you more options to pick uh, of when you can go because they did send you like an option, didn't they, Max? Or so yeah, so we out? got we remember. got a list. Then we got a list, and there was yeah, four. There was one in like uh, Michigan. There was one in Sault Ste. Marie. 
There was one in Colorado Springs. There was one in New Hampshire. And then the last one was in uh, Bowling Green, well, Ohio. I hope Sault Ste. Marie got air conditioning since I was there. Because uh, when I was there, they did not have air conditioning. Colorado it's not Springs supposed to be hot up there, right? <laughs> Well, like the, Colorado Springs, I don't think, was 90 like it was when I went there in the oh, summer no, in Sault Ste. Marie. It was hot. It was 95 degrees there when I was yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, see? I a, see? I had a nice fan I brought nope. with, and we, we, it's like, oh, we were roasting in the rooms. We called, we called the – there was thermostats in the rooms, but they didn't work. We called them wall ornaments. Yeah. All right, so I want to go back and ask you, since you started at age 15 doing this, so you weren't even able to really drive at that point. How much involvement did you get from your parents getting you from point A to point B with all the games you were working? Uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's one of the things that I like, I really appreciate like from my parents. They were, they were, they were just as committed as I was. And like, I'd always, cause I also have a twin brother and yeah. he rests all the time and he wasn't, he wasn't as committed as me at the beginning, but he kind of saw me working some cool games and he's like, you know what, that'd be pretty cool if I could work. So he started jumping on. So between me, my brother, my own hockey schedule, uh, it was especially the first couple of years, like, cause the, I didn't have my license. So they were, they were driving me everywhere and they, they, whenever, like during the week, not so much, but on the weekends, they, 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 they were, de they were devoted to watching me and they got to see, they got to see some pretty interesting, uh, things happen at my, for my mic games. We had, we, had, we had the cops called once, uh, then oh, you got, you had mama bear up there in the stand. So you, you can only imagine what was going on out there, but it was, it was totally, Totally a different experience from what's going on now. Like they stopped, they stopped by one of my games one time in Prospect, and they were like, you know what? They're like, I'm glad I'm not driving you around all the time, but we, re we really, really enjoy watching you rap. So it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. Well, you know, we were talking before you got on. I mean, it is a commitment. It's a commitment not only for the person that wants to be an official, but for their parents too, especially if they are under 16 years of age, or you know, maybe even under if they're just not driving yet. I mean, let's. Let's not kid ourselves. It's it's a big commitment, just like hockey is. So, you know, you're going game to game. But, you know, parents, uh, you know, they're used to taking you to maybe one, maybe two games in a day, not five or six games like you might be working as a referee. Or, you know, you might get two or three games in a row and then you go to a different rink or you come back later and you get, a you know, two or three more games. So, you know, you can stay pretty busy. Like most of the guys that are serious about refing hockey are probably working on average, on a weekend, four to six games, I would say. Is that fair? A lot. It's more yeah. than that. I think a lot yeah. of the referees that are working a lot, they're working two Friday, they're working four, five, six on Saturday if they can, yeah. and whatever they can scrap together on Sunday, and then all yeah. while trying to play. Because, you know, Max played uh, with him and his brother. They played, you know, double-A hockey, and yep. they had a full schedule. I mean, I know I played, you know, a similar schedule, and it was tough. But you know what? It's kind of interesting. Once you finally learn like where your schedule is and then you start to learn where the rinks are and how much time it takes to get from each rink to each rink, you can really pick up a lot of games. Like you're already there for, you know, something. You can go drive over what? What's a 12-minute drive over to a different rink? We have so many rinks that are so close to yeah. each other. You know, yeah, you, you can get... pick up a game. Your parents already had to drive out there. That's right. So that's how, that's how a lot of parents look at it. Yeah. And, you know, let's face it, some of these guys, if they're working that many games, they're making pretty nice money during the uh, when they get that monthly check that comes in. Um, you know, they're probably uh, pretty happy with their commitment that they made. <laughs> Certainly beats uh, flipping burgers you, and doing fries. The first time I made $1,000 in a month refereeing, and mind you, this was a very long time ago. And yeah. remember what games were, 11, 12, yeah. 15 bucks. Yeah, you could really think about how many games I was refereeing at that point. It was a good feeling, but I can tell you this, nobody I knew made anything close to that working. Mm -hmm. And I knew people that worked at Best Buy and did this and that and nobody yeah. nobody made that. I mean, my one buddy made close to that, but he was uh he was selling electronics at Best Buy. That was the one guy that I knew, but he always felt terrible afterwards because his money was based upon commissions off of offering the like extended warranties <coughs> so that was like his whole goal to sell extended warranties so yeah. i think i'd rather referee and get yelled at <laughs> probably probably easier 
All right. So, Max, what's uh, what's next for you now that you've gone to these camps? Does this take you to some different leagues that we uh, we will see you working in in the future season? Or what do you get once you've gone to one of these camps? What kind of doors open up for you at this point? Well, so my futures camp, that was that was that was definitely uh, a nice nitty gritty camp. That was I learned a ton of stuff there. I had 20 pages of written notes down there. And it was that was that was the most personal uh, instruction and uh, informational thing I've ever I've ever been a part of. And it was six days, and that was more for exposure and not exposure. That was more for development, and uh, I learned a lot obviously there. And that was that was more of a bag. I mean, we did timing, we did off ice testing, on ice testing, we did all of that, and then um, so this month I went to Buffalo for ODP prospects camp. And nice. that was that was more that's more of a tryout versus futures camp, which is more of a development camp. Okay. And um, I picked I picked some guys brains about the camp and I was like, am I ready? Am I not ready? Is this for me? Is this not for me? It's and I ended up taking them out and I went there. Do you guys hear me? Are you OK? Yeah. We just yeah. froze really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Yep, you're good. Uh, yeah. So I, went, I ended up going out to Buffalo with about six, six or seven Chicago guys. And it was definitely the right choice. Uh, I skated my butt off again there and I, I perked some interest, I guess. And I was doing my hardest, skating my hardest, trying to look the best I could because that's the, when you're in front of a lot of those guys, it's definitely a little intimidating, but yeah. uh, you got, you're, you're, trying, you're trying to look the best that you can out there and you just get your hardest. And at the end of the day- well, um, You're a young guy. Do you I'm know who Kerry Frazier was? You ever I'm heard not. of Kerry Frazier? You don't know Kerry Frazier? No. Well, you almost got the hair going, man. He's I mean, not, if you just get a, a little bigger and you he's... spray it, you'd, you'd be Kerry Frazier, like a little Kerry Frazier. <laughs> yeah. You look Kerry Frazier up no, after no, we get off, guy. okay? He was the legendary oh, right. NHL referee with the best hair ever, okay? Uh, he was the last guy to wear a helmet. Yeah, yeah, last guy to put a helmet on. That's right. They 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 made a big thing, a, yes. a Bauer or Reebok. Yeah, they probably couldn't get a helmet on with the hair he had. He had a he had a nice flow going. So it still <laughs> looked that good when he was out there well, for the national nice anthem. Helmet hair. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, all right. So so now that you've gone to the tryouts, have you already been offered some opportunities coming out of that tryout camp? Or so yes, yeah. So they gave they gave me a pretty good opportunity. They, so they all, they all said they liked me on their team, and uh, that was really nice of them. And it was it was a great opportunity for me. So. I'm going to be Congrats, skating a few man. junior awesome. games this year. Thank you. And then they said, they said if I'm doing good, doing good at the levels, I'll, I'll be seeing some better games as the year goes on. So yeah. obviously you always have some, some good games here for. too, my friend, I'm sure. Referee in chief yeah, right next to you. There's plenty of games here and I'm looking. I don't What's have that? anything to do with that. Don't look my I way. I know, I know, but you know. <laughs> it's all good. You'll, we'll, we'll see lots of, uh, lots of Macs out there. It's some really great games. All right. Anything else that you'd like to share? Did well, Scott, you, you know, Scott, you, you had re- those. You recently. What? I would say you recently, you recently moved right near me. So we'll, we'll be doing a ton of games together this season. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You'll get them all. <laughs> no, I won't get any games. Max will have them all. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be skating together, Scott. <laughs> all right. Um, so you, you took 20 pages of note. Anything, anything that you'd like to share with some of the officials that you learned that you'd like to pass on to anybody? Um, that's a good question. I don't have my learn notebook how to, with me here. Learn how to use OneNote. That's that would be learn my passing on of information. If you took twenty pages of notes, you should learn how to use the application OneNote. There you go. And Microsoft I was, I was just plug right there. Take, take take your take your notes in there, and you'll never have to write twenty pages of stuff. <laughs> yeah, actually, and I just I just there's a ton of. There's a ton of stuff that I was officiating in the three official system, and I was I was still pretty 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 new to the three official system, and there's a lot of referee and linesman like specific uh, facts that I took yeah, they down. Do. And I, I, they still do uh, a day, right? They do a referee day, and then they do a linesman day. Yeah, so every camp I've yeah. been to, they've had they've had a day of, of classroom as a referee, and a day of classroom as a linesman, yeah. and most of them kind of say the same stuff. But like I said, when I went to futures camp, that was that was totally more in depth than I've ever been, ever, I don't even ever, ever heard of. So, and there was some pretty cool tips and tricks that they gave us. 
uh, about staying on the wall, getting off the wall, whatever, using sight lines, bending. I'd love twisting. to hear some of those tricks. I wish you'd share some of those with us. Uh, the, the biggest thing I probably learned in the three fish system, like the biggest cheat I learned is like, is like, and I, I haven't heard it at all in Illinois. It's more like when you're skating down the ice and you're coming back the other way, they're like, don't, don't always rush the, cause I'm always a big skater and I, I rush all the time. And they're like, just take a deep breath, calm. They're like, come back play, kind of coming against play almost. And as soon as play crosses you, then you do a nice controlled turn. And it was just getting the reps down and getting like the, the feel for what they're trying to teach down. And when they come back to you after the game and they're like, hey, like you did, you did this right, you did this right, you did this wrong, and you go back and work on this, you kind of were like, damn, like, I got to work on that. So then the next game you try and work on all of it together without forgetting what you messed up the first time. So yeah. it was more it was more personally just getting down everything I can because from the very uh, – the, the crew that was so that was so qualified, that was like – it was unbelievable. They were, they were saying stuff that I've never heard of. And yeah. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that really, like, coming off of me, but it's like – putting everything, taking a little bit from here, taking a little bit from here, putting it all into your game and trying to make the best you possible. Yeah. Well, I want to show you, you, I'm sure you've done a lot of power skating and that's what's helped you to get where you're going. And I do want to share this because uh, Jamison Groner, who is one of the people here in Illinois, that's one of our top officials. He works the A and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he's had a lot of camps, but he, uh, he sent out an email today uh, and he wants to help try to grow the officiating pool if he can, because he's brought some people that were players into the officiating side uh, just from some of his camps. But he sent out an email today that if you're interested in learning power skating as a referee, he's going to open up his clinics that he gets a lot of money for free if you want to come out and skate. So to uh, try. Was, yeah, to I try believe it. that email said to, to try it. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's, you know, going to give you the whole clinic for free, but he'll let you come out one night and learn and, and see what it's all about because he'd like to see the officiating pool on his side because that's his specialty is is teaching referees how to skate. And, uh, you know, he teaches a lot of the hockey teams and players, power skating and things of that nature. But, um, you know, it's kind of one of his givebacks that he'd like to see us grow our officiating staff if possible. So. If you are interested, you know, reach out to one of us, uh, not you, but I mean, anybody out there that's watching, if you want to reach out to us, uh, we'll try to share some information with you to get you into a program. If you'd like to be, A, if you're already an official and you want to get better at it, or B, if you're just getting started and you'd like to learn the right way to do things and, and uh, you know, proceed to grow like Max has to be able to get to these different levels to get to the great games and, and see where your career can end. End up, I should say, not end, but end up. I was gonna say end yeah. up. That was yeah. I was like, end up. all right, now you're done. Okay, have a yeah, nice day. Your career's Thank over. You, You've been Scott. in futures camp. Nice talking to you. All right, see you later. <laughs> I, no, I totally get behind. All right. Jameson. I, I skate with Jameson. I, also, I've been skating with him all summer long, and he, it's a great, it's a great power skate. It's great. I mean, I love the guys. He's an awesome skating guy. He's an awesome guy. He's he's it's it's a it's a fun skate. I mean, you think power skating all oh, this sucks, but. He's got a good group of staff with him, and there's actually a ton. I mean, I go sometimes as a player, sometimes as a ref, and it's I, you benefit either way. And it's all about the time you put in on the ice. So, yeah, and if you're making the, if you're making the move from you know player into referee, uh, two things that I would point out: one is you're going to learn to skate without the stick. A lot of the players they rely a lot on that stick for the balance and control and their turns. They're used to having something in their hands that's that's helping them with that. When you become a referee or a linesman, you're doing that without the stick in your hand. So it's a different kind of skating. And that's number one. Number two, we skate a little different than players because we're really trying to keep our skates more on the ice, uh, you know, two feet on the ground as much as possible. Uh, Brad's probably going to roll his eyeballs at me on a couple of those because, you know, Brad's a good skater too. But, uh, you know, you are trying to to keep your feet on the ice and, and you know, you're out there for the, the marathon, not not the sprint. And then, uh, you know, the third thing that... Yeah, uh, you're trying to conserve energy. Yeah, yeah. And, That's the big thing. Cons yeah. Conservation of energy and not wasting it. And then the other big one would be probably you better be a good backwards skater. We skate backwards a lot as a referee, unless you're working in the three-man system. And if you're a referee in the middle, you won't be starting out as a referee in the middle. You'll still put your couple years in before you get to that point, and you got to be a good backwards skater. So refereeing is a lot of backward skating 
So. Agreed. At least, you know, especially, yep. you know, even lining, a lot of backward skating. So. All right. Well, Max, uh, I appreciate your taking the time to come join us. We've already uh, put an hour in here. So uh, we do this every Monday, 5.30 p.m. Uh, major software updates if you today. Say so live, if you didn't catch us live on yeah. Facebook and uh, – <laughs> And, and YouTube, there were some uh, some serious changes for us and a lot of updates on everybody's machines. Probably you experienced it today at work or at home, or you will. Uh, so we'll get that back rolling so everybody can be up next week and, and be seen by everybody. But the replays are always on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash Refroom. So uh, anything you want to say in parting, Max? Uh, just keep going. If you have, you ever have dreams and you want to keep going repping, just keep skating. If you ever have any questions, obviously contact one of us for more than that. We'd help you out. Uh, there you go. See, Max is already on the give back train. I like that. Very <laughs> good. All right. Referee and chief Brad Bomrock, you got anything before we head out here? No, I don't think so. I think we covered it all. The only good thing is, uh, registration is open and, we're starting to look better. Numbers are climbing, so it's making us a little happier. But we still need more. So if people are wanting to ref, teach them how to sign up. And we're an hour in, and now your picture's really looking good on the Internet again. <laughs> Spent like 50 minutes. Don't look minutes at me. I like can't you're help on the it. the Witness Protection Program again. Not my All right. deal. All right. So on behalf program. of Max Lieberman, upcoming uh, official, seeing where he, how far he can go in this, uh, and our man, Brad Bomrock, I am Scott Smokin' Sills. We will see you next Monday right here on The Ref Room. Peace out, everybody. Have a great week.